Vic cardigan and its little cousin Vega. The Vic and Vega patterns are very close. There are just a few differences in pattern and therefore in volume, but the assembly is similar. The Vic pattern allows you to make a comfortable unisex cardigan for children from 3 to 12 years old and women from 34 to 46. French sizes. The fit of the cardigan is straight with slightly lowered shoulders. You can make two variants with this pattern. Variant A first, which is mid buttocks length for women, rather mid hips for children with a band sewn at the bottom. This variant has a front button placket attached to the cardigan, that is to say that the button placket is in continuity with the front piece and that it will be folded over the wrong side of the garment to form a button placket on each side. The neckline ends with a bias binding straddling the edge. Variant B is a cardigan with front and neckline facing. The button placket is also at the front. The bottom of variant B has a single or double stitched hem. The neckline in women is more low cut than in children, which is closer to the neck. For both variants, the cuffs end either with a bias binding or a simple hem. A rounded pocket is also available as an option. The Vega pattern for babies from one month to four years only offers variant A with band at the bottom of the body and button placket attached to the body. To complete it and make it a little cousin of Vic, we now offer a bonus to Vega to transform it into a variant B with facing like Vic. You will find this bonus available for sale in PDF only on the Ekati site. Each garment can be completed with additional finishes, such as adding piping for variant B with facing as here, or the addition of a bias bound seam on most of the inside seams allowances of the cardigan in variant A. The skill level is easy for basic versions. If you add the finishes that we will show in this video, such as piping or bias bound seams, the skill level becomes intermediate and is for seamstresses who challenge themselves or who are more experienced. You will learn how to make a button placket directly on the body or to assemble a facing to sew a bias binding at the neckline and at the bottom of the sleeves for the bias binding option. Finally, you will learn how to sew optional pockets. In terms of the little extras in this video, we will show you how to sew bias bound seams and finally how to quilt the cardigan if you wish. For fabrics, the choice is vast. Knitted fabrics such as the sweatshirt, French terry, a non-scratched sweatshirt on the wrong side, quilted jersey, heavy jersey, knitted velvet, fleece, interlock or milano are perfectly suited. You can also make this cardigan with denim, corduroy, honeycomb, chacord or quilted woven for very different looks. For Vix variant A and for Vega, you will need knit or woven bias binding for the neckline, and for variants A and B, you will also need bias binding for the wrists and to do bias bound seams if you choose this option of finishes. In the latter case, it will be necessary to add at least 3 to 4 meters of bias binding to do bias bound seams up to 5 years and up to 5 meters in women. You will need coordinated thread, thin fusible interfacing for the button placket of variant A and the facing for variant B. And you will also need buttons or snaps for the front button placket. If you opt for the snaps, we highly recommend the special anorak snaps, which allow a good hold for a little thick fabric. If you use a jersey of fine to medium weight, then the metal snaps for jersey are sufficient. Regarding the classic buttons, we can take different button sizes from 12 mm at least up to 15 minus 20 mm or 25 minus 30 mm in particular for women if we want a big buttons graphic effect. Finally, we will use needles adapted to the fabric. Jersey needles for knits, 
Universal needles for woven fabrics. The use of a double needle is possible if you want to make hems with double stitching. The cardigan can be sewn on both the sewing machine and the serger. With the serger, the result will be clear and fast. And if you also have the cover stitch option, it is really ideal for sewing the hems. But it can also be done with a sewing machine. For the knitted fabrics, you preferably use the stretch stitch of your sewing machine or the straight stitch, but with mandatory fully voluminous polyester thread in the bobbin to ensure good extensibility of the seam made on a material that is stretchy. I would like to take this opportunity to show you the fully voluminous polyester thread, which will give you a better finish for sewing straight stitches on knitted fabrics. It is a slightly elastic and resistant thread made of polyamide or polyester. It has a fluffy and puffy side, which differentiates it from traditional threads. It is used a lot for underwear because it is slightly elastic and soft for the skin. It can be found in haberdasheries. It can be used with a serger in the upper loop or with a sewing machine in the under bobbin. This is a purchase that we really recommend because we use it very often. Use basic colors, mainly white, as it is used only for the inside seams of the garment. It is not very visible. On the other hand, a walking foot for the sewing machine can be really useful for the knitted fabrics or slightly thick quilted fabrics. It allows a better training of the fabric and thus prevents stretch fabrics from relaxing. It can be a specific feat to buy or it can already be integrated into your sewing machine, as for our FAF sewing machine. I show you here in the preamble how to do bias bound seams, which we will then do at each assembly step on the garments here. In this example, I have assembled by a seam two pieces together. I do not need to overcast the edges because they will be covered by a bias binding. Take a slightly longer pre-folded bias binding length, open the bias binding and place a right side edge along the seam allowance, like this. Align or make slightly exceed the bias binding. This avoids having to cut the seam allowance afterwards. Also start after the seam allowance of the ends to avoid the excess thickness of these seam allowances, which will be sewn themselves to other pieces. Pin along and in the same way as at the other end, stop before the seam allowance. Fold over 2 slash 3 millimeters the two ends wrong sides together, which we pin again to hold them in place. And stitch along the seam allowance. If necessary, trim the seam allowances as well. Then fold the bias binding across the inner seam allowance. We see at the ends, the good with the fold is well finished. Pin, there should not be any excess thicknesses which would interfere the fold. If this is the case, it is that we must still trim the seam allowance, which is too wide. So we pinned and we're going to top stitch through the layers to hold the bias binding. And here we have a bias bound seam and therefore a superb finish. The fact of having left the ends bare will allow us to continue sewing and assembling this edge to another piece without being embarrassed by the bias binding. We can then as here assemble the other pieces and do bias bound seams without extra thickness. So to summarize, sewing a bias bound seam is done rather when assembly and without touching the seam allowances to advance smoothly. Finally, for those who want to save time, we can use a special foot for sewing a bias binding, which allows to sew in a single operation.
I'm going to show you here how to quilt and pad a fabric. This is a technique which is not detailed in the guidebook, but only shown here in video. So why quilt and padding? In general we quilt when we want to obtain a soft and thicker fabric. For example if you take a double gauze, it's thin and too light for a cardigan. But if we take two double gauzes with a thickness of wadding between the two, this gives us a thicker fabric, warm and comfortable, which will be perfect for a cardigan. We could also quilt a poplin, a wadding, and light denim, for example, or two jerseys with a wadding between the two as here with these mini diamond or large diamond jerseys, which are already padded when purchased. Whatever the choice made, you must choose the quality of the wadding to keep flexibility and a thickness that remains comfortable to wear. To quilt, you will need one patchwork ruler or a classic ruler, one textile pen that can be erased hot, and a pair of scissors. For the video here, I choose to make one of the Vic variant in poplin with flowers on the outside, a thin and flexible chambray on the inside of the garment, and a fairly light wadding. We will first cut all the pieces except the bottom band of variant A because it will be folded in two in the three materials the outer fabric, the inner fabric, and the wadding. We will then cut the seam allowances, the hems if we have any or, as here, the value of the button placket in variant A in order to avoid excess thickness at the seam of the edges. I'm going to start by marking the quilting marks with a special textile pen that can be removed when hot. Here a friction pen whose traces will leave at the end when I iron. We can make the shapes we want diamonds, squares, waves. I will choose the simplicity and make a quilting in parallel lines. So I'm going to mark with my friction pen on the right side of my outer fabric lines space three centimeters apart about starting at the bottom. The distance between the quilting lines is free depending on whether you want a tight quilting and therefore a more crushed wadding. If you do few quilting lines, then your wadding will be more bulky. Once the first line has been drawn, I go up of 3 cm my patchwork ruler using the indicated graduations and I trace the next line, etc. up to the top of each piece. Here I have chosen to show you the quilting of the front piece number one. The wadding is quickly pinned to the fabric rather on the fabric side so that the pins can then be repositioned without discomfort when the outer fabric covers the wadding. As you can see here, the seam allowance of the wadding has not been cut enough. We can adjust with scissors. We then position the wrong side of the outer fabric on the other two thicknesses. The wadding will be sandwiched between the two. This is why it was more practical to position the pins on the inner fabric and not on the wadding. I will position pins to hold the three layers together. I recommend placing the pins perpendicular to the quilting lines drawn to prepare the work well and facilitate the stitching. We are going to pin regularly across the lines. Then we are going to stitch the long parallel lines as I did here line by line through all the thicknesses with back stitches. You can use tone on tone or contrasting threads depending on the effect chosen. It's a bit long but rather fun to do.
thus assemble each piece of clothing by quilting each piece with the same method. There are again special presser feet to make seams in parallel lines without having to draw the quilting lines beforehand. Here's my faffs. In any case, this is the result. All my pieces are well padded, but the seam allowances are not padded, and the button placket neither, so I can fold it without extra thickness. Here are the different pieces of my padded cardigan. I check that my quilting lines are aligned on the two front panels before stitching. Finally, note that for the lower body band of variant A, we only quilt the half width of the band with only wadding because the band will be folded in half later like this. So we only top stitch with a line like this and we will fold later to form the lower body band. The inner fabric is not useful in this case. We can obviously take us here an already quilted and padded fabric like this beautiful double gauze that we offer on the site. The quilting having been done on large panels, each time you cut your pieces, you will have to stop the top stitching that has been cut and which will therefore slightly undo as handling. Also, Either we immediately overlock all the pattern pieces with a circa, or we will make small stopping points back and forth along the existing stitching to block them as I did here. There, I did it in white so that you can see well, but obviously we will rather do it with a tone-on-tone -tone thread so that it is invisible. Again it's a bit tedious, but it's worth it. Seam allowances of 7mm for Vega and Vic and 1cm for Vic Mum are included in the patterns. Only the pockets have a seam allowance of 1cm on the children's patterns and the top of the pocket is 2.5cm for women. For the hems of the sleeves or bottom for the variant B, the seam allowances are 2cm whatever the age and the pattern. For variant B, you must adapt the pattern pieces. First the front, piece 1 is to be modified. You have to cut the button placket on 2cm over the whole height for children and 3.5cm for women. In fact we no longer need the attached button placket since we are going to add a facing. You can also simply fold piece 1 over its height 2 cm from the edge or 3.5 cm as a woman before cutting the fabric. So there is always a seam allowance of 7 mm for the child and 1 cm for the woman to be able to assemble the two fronts to the facing. Then we'll look at the desired length of the cardigan. If you want a short cardigan, Leave pieces 1 and 2 as in their height. There will thus be a hem to form 2 cm by folding the bottom of the fabric. You can fold the pattern piece by hand down 2 cm to realize the height on your bust and adjust if necessary. In this case, the short cardigan will require repositioning the optional pockets a little higher, otherwise, they will be taken in the hem. Then move up the position of the pockets by 1 to 3 cm, depending on the location you want, rather 1 for babies, 2 cm for children and 3 cm for women. If you want a variant B at the mid buttocks in women and mid hip in children, you will have to lengthen the front, back and facing pieces by the value indicated in the table in your guidebook. We cut all the pieces. <laughs> 
For variant B, you will see that the front facing piece number 6 is a little longer than the front piece front number 1 because it must be fused on the wrong side and the interfacing tends to shorten the piece. So for long pieces like here, it is better to anticipate a little, then cut the bottom of the facing after interfacing as I do here. We fuse the following pieces on the wrong side with thin fusible interfacing. For variant A, interface the attached button placket on 2 cm wide without interfacing the seam allowances on the edge and at the top and bottom to avoid excess thickness. For women, interface on 3.5 cm. Do this on the two fronts then for variant A. Also interface two rectangles on the wrong side of the band number 4 at the location of the button, button hole or snap, like I did here. For variant B, interface, excluding seam allowances, the wrong side of pieces 6 and 7, as I show you here. If the front facing is still a little longer than the pieces 1, just cut to the right length. I have prepared four garments to assemble for this video. Two variants A and two variants B, all in size three years. The assembly is the same for the baby, the child or the woman. Here are two variants A. The first variant A here with a hem at the bottom of the sleeves, a bias binding at the neckline and pockets. Another variant A quilted with bias binding at the bottom of the sleeves at the neckline and seam allowances with bias binding. And two variant B including an extended variant B with hem at the bottom of the sleeves, facing and pockets. Finally, a short variant B with facing with a bias bound seam. This garment also has a bias binding at the bottom of the sleeves. The four garments will be assembled in parallel as the steps go by to illustrate the different steps. A final precision for variant A. In general, we will prefer stretch fabrics because the band at the bottom is shorter than the lower body, but if we choose to make this variant in non-stretch fabric, like here the padded jacket, it will then be necessary to lengthen the pattern piece number 4 by 1 cm for babies and children and 3 cm for women. So when the fabric is cut and enfolded, this fabric band would be 2 cm more for babies and children and 6 cm for women because the pattern piece is placed at the fold and the fabric band is therefore double length. You want to sew pockets, notch all around the pocket, except the top. I remind you that for the pockets, the seam allowance is 1 cm, but the top of the pocket includes a 2.5 cm hem for women and only 1 cm for children and babies. Overcast the top edges I have done here. Cut a cardboard template to the shape of the specific piece given in the pattern. Then put the cardboard template on the wrong side of the piece of fabric. Fold the top of the pocket about 1 cm and 2.5 cm for woman. Then iron and remove the cardboard. The top fold of the pocket is then performed and we can stitch it with straight point to keep it in place. Then put back the cardboard template, fold the three sides while marking with an iron. The folds are well formed thanks to the template at the rounded. Then remove the cardboard. Finally, another method if you have a serger, you can overlock the edges of the pocket and increase the differential on two at the level of the rounding, then return to neutral one differential on the straight lines. So we gather the rounded, which help to preform the folds. Then we will eventually iron with the cardboard template inserted on the wrong side to mark the rounding, 
but here I did not need. With a finger it was enough. We will now sew the pocket on the right side of the garment according to the pattern marks for variant A and extended variant B. But if you want to sew pockets on the short variant B, you have to place the pockets a little higher so that the bottom of the pocket is at least 4 cm above the edge of the front. Otherwise when we hem the bottom of the cardigan, the bottom of the pocket would be caught in the hem seam. Pin them very carefully to make sure the pocket will be straight and repeat in symmetry. I advise you to base the outline outside the pocket opening to make sure everything is properly seated. Then stitch at the straight point as close as possible from the pocket edge, that is to say 2 mm from the edge by making some lock stitches at the start and end of the stitching. Finally, I wanted to show you that there are also special presser feet for sewing very close to the edges with suitable marks. Change the classic foot to this special foot, possibly put back the double training. The needle is shifted to the left because the guide at the start is flush with the fabric with the needle aligned with the guide. So move the needle a few millimeters to the left of the guide and stitch. Remove the pins as you go because the guide does not allow to stitch through the pins. If you often do stitchings like this, it's not a bad idea to invest in this presser foot. Here the two pockets have been stitched and are symmetrical. Here the variant A and the extended variant B. Here on cardigan A in a sweatshirt and then on quilted cardigan A. Place with right sides together the front and back of the body. Align the shoulders. Pin and stitch at 0.7 cm from the edge for the child, and it would be 1 cm for the woman. Here we stitched, and we overlocked the edges together of cardigan A in terracotta sweatshirt. For the quilted cardigan, we chose rather to do a bias bound seam with the interior seam allowances of the shoulders. Then overcast or overlock the edges of the button placket here. We could also do a bias bound seam in option, but then we would stop before the ends of the seam allowances as I did here on the other cardigan, which will have bias bound seams on all interior seams. Now we are going to mark with the iron folds in the height on 2.7 cm wide in child and 4.5 cm in woman to form the button placket along the fold line. The cross line is illustrated on the pattern. Iron. Then superimpose the pieces number one at the level of the button placket. The crossing lines must overlap, right side on left side when wearing for girls, the reverse for boys, and hold in place at the top and bottom by a clip or a pin, but be careful not to sew because we leave on hold until the assembly of the neckline bias binding. Fold the button placket over its entire width of 2.7 cm for children and 4.5 cm for women, and hold it with pins. Cut a bias binding a little longer than the neckline. The bias binding must exceed 1 cm at each end. Then open the prefolded bias binding and place it right sides together or right side against wrong side along the neckline by aligning the edges. The two work it is really as you want. I will put it on the right side here and on the wrong side on the quilted cardigan to show you the two methods. In both cases, pin and stitch at 0.7 or 1 cm from the edge along the first fold on the bias binding. At the front button placket, sew straight.
Here we stitched. I made one with the bias binding on the right side and the other on the wrong side of the neckline to show you the difference. Now trim the seam allowance with the scissors. Then notch the bias binding and the neckline together in the seam allowance to avoid excess thickness when folding the bias binding. In all cases, fold the bias binding on itself like an accordion on the right side. So I'll show you again. Pinch the ends and stitch through the thicknesses at the edge of the button placket. What I've already done on the other side to show you. We have stitched. Trim the seam allowances at the ends of the bias binding. Then fold the bias straddling the neckline. Here it is on the wrong side. It is held in place by pins. Carefully baste the bias binding inside for the bias binding, which was first sewn on the right side of the neckline and which is now on the wrong side. Then stitch on the outside to avoid making small folds. Here I baste this one and then top stitched. Remove the basting threads. For the bias binding that was first stitched on the wrong side of the neckline, stitch it on the right side. Finally, personally, I prefer to do so because I can see the stitching to do on the right side directly without a baste. We will first talk about the bias binding option at the bottom of the sleeves. Here we have chosen to make one of our cardigans like this. First cut the bottom of the sleeve at the mark. I already did it at startup. The seam allowance for the hem is no longer useful. Cut a length of bias binding, here one centimeter longer than the length of the sleeve's bottom. Align the right side of the bias binding open against the wrong side of the sleeve at the edge. Stitch along the fold of the bias binding. Here we stitched. Trim the seam allowance to 4 mm. Fold the bias binding across the edge. Form a tuck. Pin and top stitch the bias binding to hold it in place. As I did here on the other sleeve to show you. Obviously repeat in symmetry on the other sleeve bottom. For the simple hem option at the bottom of the sleeves, overcast or overlock the bottom of the sleeves. For all sleeves bottom options, place the top of the sleeve on the om hole with right sides together, starting with the middle of the sleeve head, which has been marked with a notch and which must be aligned with shoulder seam. Pin all along the om hole. Then stitch at 0.7 cm from the edge for the child and 1 cm for the woman. Here we stitched and overcast the edges together on the sweatshirt version. For the quilted, I decided to sew a bias bound seam at the om holes. It's possible but not easy. I then lay the seam allowances against the body then held in place by hand slipped stitches. Be careful. I did not provide a length of bias binding for this part in the measures given to sew bias bound seams. Whatever option chosen, repeat on the other sleeve. With right sides together, pin the under sleeves together, then the sides. Stitch at 0.7 cm child or 1 cm in woman in one stitch. Here we stitched. And on this garment, we overcast the edges. As an option, we can sew bias bound seam all along except the ends. As we did here on the quilted version. The connections between the bias bindings are not perfect, but it is rather tricky to make. At the ends, I went to the bottom of the sleeves. I will finish it at the end of the work. We will now assemble the lower body band. Do not forget if you have chosen a non-stretch fabric to extend the bottom band as shown in the guidebook or previously in the video. 
On the long side of the band number four, we had fused two rectangles of thin fusible interfacing, three by two centimeters, one at each end beyond the seam allowances. Fold the band number four in half in the length with right sides together. Align the edges of the ends and we stitch the ends on the height at 0.7 cm from the edge for child, at 1 cm for woman. For the fabric I had quilted, there is a little more thickness, but everything is fine anyway. Here we sticked. We will now cut the corners and turn inside out. Divide the band into four equal parts and mark with pins. Do the same at the bottom of the cardigan. Then position the band number four folded in two lengthwise at the bottom of the body with right sides together. The raw edges are aligned and match the pins. Align the ends of the band to the edge of the button placket on each side. The band is intended just shorter to create a slight tension. In the case of a non-stretch material, you will have lengthened this band so it will be the same length as the lower body. Reposition the pins through the thicknesses. Turn the bottom of the button placket on 2.7 cm for children and 4.5 cm for women and replace the pin through the thicknesses. The band is therefore sandwiched between the button placket and the body. Stitch at 0.7 cm for children and 1 cm for women by stretching slightly on the band. If it is made of stretch fabric, otherwise it is the same length, so that it is the same length as the bottom of the cardigan and overcast, otherwise so optional bias bound seam. Here we stitched, and we overcast for the sweatshirt version, but for the quilted version, we sew bias bound seam. Finally, lower the bottom band. The button placket is replaced towards the wrong side of the garment. For the quilted version, I will finish with stitches slipped by hand to hold it in place. For the simple hem option at the bottom of the sleeves, make a 2 cm tuck and it remains to stitch the hem 1.5 cm from the bottom edge. Make a single stitch or a double stitch with a double needle. It's never easy to do for very small sizes for babies. I then recommend to place the presser foot well in the sleeve as well to be able to advance without problem like a hamster in a wheel. Here is the result on the other sleeve. For the bias binding option at the bottom of the sleeves, lay down the seam allowances, stitch back and forth to hold in place. Or as here, finish by hand to properly tuck the bias bing seam allowances and press everything together. For the installation of buttons or button holes, we find ourselves in the last chapter after the assembly instructions for variant B, because the installation of the buttons is identical for all variants.
overcast the front and back shoulders of the body. Place the front and back of the body with right sides together. Align the shoulders. Pin and stitch at 0.7 cm from the edge for the child and 1 cm for the woman. Here we stitched and we overlocked the edges together of variant A. We stitched and pressed the seam open with iron or finger for variant B. Overcast or overlock the front and back facing shoulders edges. Then assemble the front and back facing pieces by the shoulders with right sides together. Pin and stitch at 7 mm for children and 1 cm for women. Then press the seam open with an iron or finger what I did here. Here we stitched and then pressed the seams open. Now overlock or overcast the front and back outer edges as here on the grey garment. Also optional bias bound seams as here on the garment in navy sweatshirt. If sewing bias bound seam, stop at 2 cm from the bottom to avoid excess thickness at the hem, which I did here on this garment. Align the body and the facing at the neckline and the front edges with right sides together. Pin and stitch at 7 mm for children, 1 cm for women. Cut the corners and notch in the rounding of the neckline. It is optional to insert before stitching a piping between the body and the facing. I will not do it on this garment in the end, but I will show you how to do it. Align the margin of the piping along the edges of the front and back, starting from the front opening down, back up following the neckline, then going down along the opposite front opening. The piping bead is on the inside of the fabric as seen here. Pin and stitch with a special foot type zipper foot along the bead. Then put the facing along the body by aligning the edges with right sides together. The piping is therefore sandwiched. Pin. I recommend to baste to hold in place, then stitch through the layers. As I told you, I finally chose not to insert piping because my garment would have been too loaded with details, between the gingham facing, the bias binding and the lorex fabric. With or without piping, notch in the rounding of the neckline and cut the corners. Fold the facing inside the body with wrong side together iron. Be careful not to stitch, because we will need to turn the facing for the hem. We will first talk about the bias binding option at the bottom of the sleeves. Here we have chosen to make one of our cardigans like this. First cut the bottom of the sleeve at the mark. The seam allowance for the hem is no longer useful. Cut a length of bias binding, here one centimeter longer than the length of the sleeve's bottom. Align the right side of the bias binding open against the wrong side of the sleeve at the edge. Stitch along the fold of the bias binding. Here we stitched. Trim the seam allowance to four millimeters. Fold the bias binding across the edge, form a tuck. Place the wrong side of the bias binding on the right side of the sleeve. Pin and top stitch the bias binding to hold it in place. Obviously repeat in symmetry on the other sleeve bottom. As I did here on the other sleeve to show you. 
for the simple hem option at the bottom of the sleeves. Overcast or overlock the bottom of the sleeves. For all sleeves bottom options, place the top of the sleeve on the om hole with right sides together, starting with the middle of the sleeve head, which has been marked with a notch and which must be aligned with shoulder seam. Pin all along the om hole. Then stitch at 0.7 cm from the edge for the child and 1 cm for the woman. Here we stitched and overcast the edges together. I do not recommend sewing bias bound seams on the om holes, but if you want, it is still possible by superimposing the ends of the bias binding at the ends. For all versions, with right sides together, pin the under sleeves together, then the sides. Stitch at 0.7 cm child or 1 cm in woman in one stitch. Here we stitched and on this garment we overcast the edges. As an option, we can sew bias bound seam all along except the ends as we did here. Bottom hem for variant B. Overcast the bottom of the garment, open slash unfold facing by laying the seam allowances of the facing under the facing as here. On the navy piece, I sew a bias bound seam on the edge except on the ends, which will be sandwiched and hidden under the facing later. Fold the bottom of the facing. Stitch at 2 cm, parallel to the bottom of the body. Then cut the corner and fold the facing towards the inside of the garment. Finally, make the 2 cm hem and stitch around 1.5 cm. You can make a single stitch or a double stitch with a double needle. You can start at the beginning or at the level of the button placket. As an option, understitch the facing, moving the facing away from the body. Iron the seam allowances from the front middles and neckline towards the facing. and stitch together the seam allowances with the facing 2 mm from the edge while trying to go as far as possible. The angle and bottom of the front will eventually block the stitching. The understitching allows the facing to hold in place inside and not be visible outside. Optional for variant B. Top stitch the facing 3 cm from the edges for a decorative effect. And to hold the facing in place, the stitching starts at the bottom of one of the fronts and then extends towards the neckline. The back of the neckline to finish at the bottom of the other front. For the grey garment, I did it only on the back. so that I hold the facing securely in place. On the front, the buttons will hold the facing in place. Make a fold of 2 cm at the bottom of the sleeves and stitch. Mark the position of the button holes as shown on the pattern. They are done on the right front placket when the cardigan is worn for girls, but on the left front placket for boys. Mark and sew the buttons opposite. Otherwise put snaps.
Well done, your cardigan is finished. And here are your Vic and Vega cardigans are finished. We tried to make a very detailed video on the techniques and supplies specific to the sewing of these different cardigans. We hope it will be useful for you. And now it's your turn. If you publish your vest or cardigan on Instagram, don't forget to add hashtag or hashtag